of the most confusing things for any new rose grower can be all the different names of the various parts of the rose. You know, they tell you, for example, in spring you want to look for new basil breaks, and you're thinking, well, I'm not growing herbs with my roses. I don't know what that is. You know, and then they tell you, okay, you've got to look for an outward-facing bud eye. What is a bud eye? What is a bud union, and how do I join the union? Does it involve drinking beer? It just keeps going on, and it can get confusing. So all this video is going to do is just show you the various parts of the anatomy of a rose so these little terms make sense to you and then you really begin to see just how simple all of this is once you understand what you're dealing with. A five leaflet leaf set is just a set of five leaves containing five individual leaves. Like this is a set of leaves. You can see one, two, three, four, five. Here again, one, two, three, four, five. Generally this is used in deadheading because if you cut above that five leaflet leaf set, that's where they feel the cane is thickest enough in order to support the next growth that's going to bring your next flowers. So that's all a five leaflet leaf set is. It's just a set of leaves that contains five individual leaves. One of the most confusing parts on a rose for most people seems to be what exactly is a bud eye. Well a bud eye is a swelling on the cane where the next growth is going to come from. Generally you can find it at the base of a set of leaves and if I just gently pull that leaf away you can see right there there's a little bit of swelling then there's like a little half circle underneath that's what a bud eye is. And it's something important to keep in mind is there's actually one main eye then there's two guard eyes one on either side. The reason for that is if this starts to grow and for some reason gets killed back a little bit of frost or something like that then those two guard eyes can emerge and take their place. In some cases you'll even have both eyes coming out. But that's what a bud eye is. It's nothing more than that little swelling, generally at the base of a leaf, somewhere along the cane. Here's another one that's a little confusing, bud union. It's going to be actually easier to show you when this plant that's in a pot, because I've got the bud union above the ground. That's the bud union right there. That's that knot of growth that all the canes come out of. In this case, the rose is grafted, but own root roses can also eventually form a bud union. But basically the bud union is the central place where all the canes begin to come out of. And whenever you plant that rose, you want to make sure that this bud union, whether it's own root or whether it's grafted, is buried beneath the soil no matter where you live. Because that way you can get all kinds of great new growth and it protects that bud union as well from the elements. So that's all the bud union is. It's the central part of the rose just above the roots where all the canes start to grow from. Here's another one of those crazy rose terms you probably heard or read about somewhere in your life. Outward facing bud eye. Well, what the heck is that? Well, you already know what a bud eye is. We talked about that earlier, that little swelling on the cane that the new growth comes out of. And you're probably thinking to yourself, well, I'm outside, they're all outward facing. And in a way, you're kind of right. But what they mean by an outward facing bud eye is any bud eye that faces away from the center of the plant. Now, I know I just blew your mind again. Let's do a little illustration. Imagine if I take a stick, and I'm going to lower this right down to the middle of the plant, right on top of that bud union, that center piece of growth right there. This is my imaginary center line that comes all the way up the plant. Here are my bud eyes. Remember we said they were at the base of the leaves right here? Well, here is a leaf set that's facing into the stick. Therefore, that is an inward facing bud eye. It's facing in towards the center of this imaginary line. But here is a bud eye on the opposite side over here that's facing away from that imaginary center line. That is an outward facing bud eye. Basil break. That's probably another term you've heard bandied about a whole lot. What is it? It's nothing more than new canes growing from the base of the plant, like you can see that I've got right here. But what I'll do is let me bring you in a little bit closer and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Now we've got you in a little closer. Here you go. See this new growth? There's a new fresh cane there. There's a new one coming there, a new one coming there. There's more new ones coming from way down in here as well. They're all coming from the base of the plant or that bud union that we talked about earlier. And this is, these are called basil break. And this is what you love to see as a rose grower. These are fresh canes with fresh energy and are going to give me a whole lot of flowering next season. So a basil break is nothing more than a new cane growing from the base of the plant. Another term you may hear used in rose growing is blind shoot. Well, a blind shoot is nothing more than a cane that comes up and never produces flowers at the top like it's supposed to. It could be a lot of different reasons, but it's the why is not really so much important as to what it is. So if you see a cane that comes up and never produces blooms for whatever reason it may be, all you really want to do then is just go back to one of those outward facing bud eyes and just cut it back, and then you should get new flowers at that point. 
I'd like to talk about now is what is a rose hip. You hear this word used a lot as well. It's very simply these round little circles. There used to be flowers here, as you can tell. I didn't deadhead this, so what it's now doing is it's called setting hips. And hips are basically the seed pod of a rose. Because if I actually cut this open, if I go down inside, there's actually small rose seeds starting to form down in there. If you plant those, you eventually get a rose. What rose is anybody's guess? But when rose breeders cross roses, this is what they go for. They go for the hips, they pull the seeds out, and then that's what then creates the new roses. If you leave your hips on all season long after they flower, it tends to discourage the flowering of the repeat flowering roses. That's why you want to go ahead and cut them off to encourage new blooming. But come fall, go ahead and leave your hips on. Two reasons. Number one, it encourages the rose to go dormant, and if you live in a cold season, this is what you want. They are also a tremendous source of vitamin C for birds during the winter. So that's what a rose hip is. It is just that little ball that forms, that seed pod that forms after the bloom is done. Well, that's it, really. Now you have a better idea of the anatomy of a rose. What a bud eye is, what an outward-facing bud eye, what's a five-leaflet leaf set, a bud union, and it just goes on from there. These are just useful little tools to have, so when you're looking at your roses in your garden, at least now you've got a better idea what you're dealing with. Do you have to follow all these rules? Not really. For garden roses, you know, do you have to cut to an outward-facing bud eye? No, because you just want a nicely shaped bush with lots of flowers on it. But it does help to have some idea what's going on. But in the end, just remember what I've always told you. Trust your own gardener's instincts. Take these little tools and apply them to your roses in your garden and do it the way you want to do it.